What is up, everybody? Welcome back to RacingDudes.com. And today I'm just going to take a look back at the Triple Crown here, kind of tell you after the three races who I believe is on top of the division and uh, kind of just see, uh, boy, how the first half of the year unfolded. unfolded. It was really quite incredible. We'll go back to the <laughs> Kentucky Derby where it was one of the more exciting Kentucky Derbies I think we've seen in a while as far as finishes. And it was Mystic Dan who was able to get the job done by a nose over Sierra Leone and Forever Young. Boy, Sierra Leone, he tends to have trouble in races, doesn't he? He had trouble in uh, the Kentucky Derby, whether it's his own fault, <laughs> Derby was, or Belmont, we'll get to in a second. Or maybe it was somebody else's fault. But anyway, uh, with a closer like Sierra Leone, you always worry about that. And Mystic Dan got the trip. And he exited the Kentucky Derby as the division leader after that, uh, you know, really, really good victory. So you fast forward to the Preakness. To me, we had three winners this year that were improbable. Um, but with Mystic Dan, I think, you know, you could have got there in the Derby. We had seen some flashes of brilliance. Then we get to the Preakness where Mystic Dan runs second to seize the gray, a horse that ran the race of his life on Preakness Day. Not that his races before were bad. They weren't. You win the Pat Day Mile, that's a very good race. You know, you win a nice allowance at at, at uh, Oaklawn. You broke your maiden as a two-year-old Saratoga. Very good races. The Preakness was another level in a huge, huge way for this horse. And then he went on to do not much in the Belmont. Like I said, three improbable winners. Sees the gray winning the Preakness for me is one. Never in a million years I could have bet that horse, especially at the price. But he got it done, and all of a sudden, He's got his name on the list. He could be your three-year-old, your top three-year-old as we exit the Triple Crown. But sees the gray and an amazing win for the My Racehorse team, an amazing win for D. Wayne Lucas. The feel-good story uh, of the of the Triple Crown. There's no doubt it was sees the gray winning that Preakness, an incredible performance, and honestly, probably the best performance out of the three. When it, you're just talking about the raw performance of a race. Sees the gray may have had the best of all of them, but he hasn't been able to put that race on paper other than Preakness Day. All right, then you go to the Belmont, and uh, as you, as we continue to kind of recap this thing, and you go in, and it sees the gray and Mystic Dan. If they can win, they're going to take hold of this division without any doubt. Sierra Leone was back. You thought if he could win, he will probably be the number one horse in the division heading into the summer. So those were kind of the storylines, right? And he had the new shooter mind frame, and then mind frame took over at the top of the stretch of the Belmont and looked like he was going to be the horse to stamp his name as the one to really look out for. And then he decided to drift in the stretch, allowing Dornuck to go up the rail and win. Very similar to what Mystic Dan kind of did, stuck to that rail, kept that lead, put Seize the Gray away, and just kept going. Dornock was able to win the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga. Mind frame after he decided, well, I'll quit drifting in the stretch. He re-engaged and he was trying to make a move on him late, but he couldn't get him. So Doorknock hits the wire first. Sierra Leone, the horse we talked about that likes to get in trouble. Well, Tyler Gaffleone on protective, kind of hit him out of the gate, but meh, bumping in the gate happens. Top of the stretch, protective Tyler Gaffleone kind of hits Doorknock pretty hard again. But look, it's a closer. That happens sometimes. Sierra Leone also caused his own trouble a little bit. He lugged in again and kind of cut off a couple of horses in mid-stretch. You know, I don't know. It's a lot of just bumping with this horse. He can't seem to really run straight. He was making a big move. He just couldn't get there in time. He had a lot to do, too. They left him with a lot to do. He was dead last for a lot of this race. On the turn, he was still had only one horse beat. He made his move, just not enough. So, Dornock wins in an amazing fashion. Another improbable winner, in my opinion, at least. I know some on the Racing Dudes channel do not believe that was an improbable winner. And congrats to one person in particular. You know who you are. But uh, as we as we kind of look at this thing now, Dornock, Mystic Dan, Seize the Gray. Who's number one in the division moving forward? Or not moving forward, but as of right now, who's number one in this division? Before I say the male, who I think is number one in the three-year-old male division, I think Torpedo Anna is the best three-year-old in the country, hands down. Want to get that out of the way. However, we're talking about the three-year-old boys. I've got Mystic Dan on top in the division right now, and I, I, you know, kind of my theory on it is, okay, he won the Kentucky Derby, and he was second in the Preakness. Now, he was nowhere to be found in the Belmont. 
but that's two triple crown races where he showed up and ran well. You can't really say that about uh, anybody else. I, I mean, you could say it about Sierra Leone catching freedom, but they didn't win races, but they hit the board. So they're definitely right there with a chance. If they can get some big wins, they'll move up, you know, the leaderboard, but they didn't win it. But Mystic Dan won. You look at Seize the Gray. He won uh, uh, the, the Preakness, yes, but he didn't run very well in his other triple crown attempt. You look at Dornock. Yes, he won the Belmont. He didn't run very well in his other triple crown attempt which of obviously the Kentucky Derby where he was just kind of bad trip and never saw him. Right. But with mystic Dan, yeah, he did run second in that Preakness. So that gives him a little bit of an edge. However, it's completely wide open race and like or for, for three-year-old of the year on the male side, it's completely wide open and, and it could be maybe Sierra Leone gets a couple wins and he can move ahead. Maybe, you know, catching freedom could do that. Maybe he sees the gray bounces back and could Maybe mind frame comes back. There's so many aspects of this thing, so much so that we're going to do a top five three-year-olds uh, to watch for the second half of the year video coming up here real soon. So, uh, But as of right now, as you recap the Triple Crown, it was nuts. Like, it really was. It, and it, it was – every race had some crazy dynamics. The, the Derby was insane. We talked about that. The Preakness for – D. Wayne Lucas to win this thing with my racehorse. I mean, improbable, incredible stories galore, right? And then this race was crazy talking about the Belmont. It was nuts. Mind frame had this thing won. You look at the uh, one, the one view that really shows exactly how mind frame was pulling away. Was it like the overhead? Like, I don't know. It was probably, it was probably a helicopter, but I call it the blimp view. Mind frame is literally galloping away from this field takes a hard right turn and doorknock just slips up the rail and it's over i mean it was crazy to watch this live or not watch this live it was crazy watching live but watching back the replay and going whoa that's incredible to kind of see the links that, that was lot that were lost and then regained again once he finally got back running straight so it was nuts you know and you got to give credit and we talked about it a lot the you know running your third ever race in a grade one field after two weak you know fields you, you defeated it's such a step up and that inexperience really cost mind frame you know even though kind of maybe the skepticism was he'll just not run very well because he's not ready for this he ran really well but he was green and he did things that inexperienced horses do and lo and behold one of the more experienced horses in the race doorknock he did everything the right way he got to, got to the front he ran straight. He stuck to the shortest path around the racetrack when they got to the stretch. You got to give him a ton of credit. He was able to get it done. So a crazy triple crown series. As we go into the second half of the year, Mystic Dan, probably number one on the list right now for the three-year-old males. I'll do this. I don't think he can hold on to it. I, I don't really know who's going to get it, but he he's a pretty lukewarm number one. And really, there's not like, one big win is the difference from like, you know, horses one through eight on your list right now. So uh, all that being said, it's going to be an amazing summer. It's going to be one of the best summers we've had in a while. There's a lot of really good horses. And like I said, we're going to have a top five video for the up and coming horses coming up for the summer races. But there's a lot of really good horses right now, you know, that have ran in the triple crown races that are going to have a big saying thing. The Jim Dandy, the Haskell, the Travers, uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic, of course, the Pennsylvania Derby. All those kind of races, the, the importance magnifies now that we have crazy amounts of horses that could be the three-year-old horse of the year. So keep tuning in because it's going to be an unbelievable summer of racing. It might even be more fun than what we just had, although I'm not sure because that has been a crazy, crazy triple crown. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching this video. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Want to get alerted anytime we do videos like this. And most importantly, stay tuned for more racing coverage right here on the channel.